Okay, this video is part of a series on maps and locations. And the first part of this series, we're looking at shell scripts. Um, and um, again, I'm using Google API. You may or may not like that. There is open streets or open maps, openstreetmaps.com, um, which I don't have very much experience with. I just find that Google does the best jobs with maps. And so that's what I default to. Um, some of which is using a service, some of which in the future we may be actually be using some of their code. Um, so keep in mind that what I'm showing you is using open source tools and my scripts are open source, but you're accessing a server, which is a service that um, has one copyrighted information and two, you're re depending on someone else to provide this information for you. And uh, whether you're using OpenStreetMaps or not, you know, if you're using a service that's out there, that service can be taken away. And remember, these images that we're going to be pulling today are copyrighted. Just keep that in mind, depending on what you're doing and what your plans are for this. Um, so we're going to be grabbing street views today. We're going to be giving both addresses and GPS coordinates um, to get street views and displaying them on our computer, all with a shell script. And um, let's go ahead and get started. Again, we're using a very basic API here for Google, which is just using URLs to grab information. I use wget uh, to download stuff, but you can use uh, curl if you prefer curl. I'm gonna say dash Q for quiet. And now I gotta paste in a URL here. So let me go ahead and grab, copy and paste this here. So we're gonna say uh, maps, googleapis.com, maps, API, and then we're gonna request a street view. We're gonna give it a size. I'm gonna give it kind of a wide view. Um, and then a location. So let's go ahead and type in an, ad an address. I'll say 123 Fifth Avenue, South Naples, Florida. That's near where I live. And then I'm gonna use display, which is part of the image magic package to display it. You can use whatever viewer you want. I use, dis if you don't have image magic installed already, which you might already, it's commonly installed, but it should be in repositories and we'll display, oh, I didn't give any output. So it outputted it to a funny named file right here. Let's go ahead and just remove that file. I for, if you don't give it an output name, it's going to output name of the, the file from the URL, which isn't a file name here, it's our argument. So let's go ahead, run our wget command and say dash capital O and we'll say street.png. I already have one there from a test run. I'm gonna overwrite it right now. And now I can display the street PNG. So there we go. Nice little look of downtown Naples. This is not my house. I don't live uh, in town. Uh, Naples is a very nice, very rich town. I do not live there. I live on the outskirts of Collier County. I basically live in the Everglades. Um, in fact, let's give you, I'm not gonna give you my exact address, but I'm gonna give you an area near me. I'll just say, let's look at 16th Avenue Southwest in Naples, and we'll display that. This is, yeah, this is more like where I live. Um, nice area, very sunny here, and about a 35 to 45 minute drive, um, probably close to 45 minute drive from that first shot. So. Don't think that you know I'm a millionaire or anything. I don't live downtown. That house probably costs literally probably about ten times what my house costs. Um, so anyway, that's how you get a street view. But there's more information we can put in there because that's a street view. But what way are we facing? So what we can add to our our command here, and what I'm going to add here is I'm going to say the end end symbol that ampersand ampersand. Um, and it's saying that now if that command is successful, if we successfully full, pull down an image, then we're gonna run this next command. If not, it will just not do anything after that. We're gonna say display our street.png. That way we don't have to type in two commands, there we go. Okay, so that's facing one way. What we can add in is our heading, which is uh, I believe a 360 degree heading. So here we can say end, and so we're passing it a new variable we're gonna say end and we'll say the variable is heading and we're gonna give it a value of what we were looking at 
I believe is zero. Let's go ahead and test out that theory. No, it wasn't zero. So there's the same location but facing a different direction. Let's go ahead and say 10, which should be, probably can't tell much of a difference there, but we're off a little bit off there. So let's, let's do 100. Okay, so 100 is what it looks like it was defaulting to earlier. Let's try 50. There we go, okay. So over to the left is zero, and we're turning around 360 degrees is the max we can do. If you do 360, you'll get the same view as zero um, to the right. So if I wanna move more to the right, and I wanna look more over here, I could type in 100, that would point more that way. Let's do uh, 180, so that'd be pointing back. There's a dirt road there. So if we want, what we could do here is we can pass uh, it information for four different views and get the four different angles. So that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna do it in a script. To save time, I'm gonna copy and paste the script because I already have it written up. I'm gonna say, um, well, as I've mentioned in the previous tutorials in this series, all my code's up on GitHub and here is a view of that and I'll give you more information on the GitHub stuff at the end of the video. But here's the code, I can copy and paste this, I can look at the raw, copy and paste it. I can also grab this URL here and I can then just say wget and whoops, I can say wget and paste in that. It downloads it, but it's not executable. If I try to run it, it's not gonna let me. Yeah, it's not even gonna let me autocomplete because it's not executable. What I'm gonna to have to do is change mod plus X. Now, if you get clone, you don't need to do this because it doesn't just download it, it pulls everything down as a project. Uh, but we'll say get street address, so plus X. So if you create a, a script, change mod plus X to make it executable. And at this point, I can run it by dot slash. And I didn't give it any variables. So what I can do here is I can copy and paste the example here and get a street view of Fifth Avenue in New York, one, two, three, Fifth Avenue, and my script pulls down the four different directions. There's probably, I believe there is an option to get a panorama view all the way around, but all depending on what you want to do, I think four views might be useful uh, rather than having one long one, but if you want to make a panorama that you can pan around, you can do that. Um, so go ahead, let's go ahead and look at this code. So if you watch the previous videos, uh, you're, a lot of this is gonna look familiar. Here we're checking the number of arguments given by the user. They need to give at least one argument, and really this program only takes one argument, which is the address. So this is saying, look at the number of arguments. If it's less than one, we'll then give our error output, which shows the usage and an example, and then exit, and don't run the rest of the script. Okay, then we're gonna say, take the first argument and set that to the variable of address. We don't really need to put it into address, but it's nice to label things like that. And if you're gonna be using the code, the script, the, the, the variable in more than one place, it's nice to have it like that. Uh, just for reference, I could leave this line out altogether and down here where we use address, use dollar sign one, whatever. Um, this time I, I put my pull commands and display commands and the remove command, basically the bulk of my script into a function called get view. Why did I do that? Because I think that's the easiest way to loop through it um, properly and also loop through it all at once. And what I mean by that is here down here, the bottom of our script, this is our whole script, we're already at the end, it's not very long. We're saying for i in, and then we're giving it command of sequence. Okay, so we're saying we're gonna do a for loop and we're gonna create a variable called i, and we're we gonna loop through, we're gonna loop through a set of numbers. So let's go ahead, take this, and real quick, I'll open up another shell here. I'll paste that in there, and as you can see, what this is doing, it's starting at zero, it's moving by intervals of 90, and it's going to 270 and then stopping. If we did 360 again, the first view would be the same as the last view, so we don't need to go to 360. We're just going 90, 90, 90, and stopping at 27, or sorry, 270. So that's giving us our four views instead of typing out each number, which it's only four numbers. I could have typed out each one and it actually probably would have been about the same length. 
<laughs> um, but if you wanted to get more angles, you can easily modify this to get every interval. I don't know why you would need to do that, but if you need to, you could. So I decided to throw that in the loop. Now, inside that loop we're doing is we're calling that function. Now I could have theoretically put all this in there. A few issues with that is if I did that, it would download one, display one, wait for you to close that, remove it, download the next one, display the next one, wait for you to close that view, remove it, so forth and so on. Doing this not only allows me to run all this in one command, but it also lets me use this ampersand which says do it all at once. So we have four views, instead of downloading one, downloading the next, downloading the next, it's going to start downloading all four views at the same time and displaying them as they appear and then removing them as you close them. So I thought that was the best way to do that. So that's what the ampersand there is saying, run this command and continue with the loop, which is just running that same command again, doing it four times. So again, we can run that example there, get the four street views. We can also do it in Naples, Florida. Right there, that's a nice house right there. I think that's the house we were looking at earlier in the first example there. Uh, so, there's our street views, and, and you can somewhat line them up because of the curvature of the lens. Um, they're not gonna line up perfectly, but if we can figure out, yep, yeah, okay, so this one goes here. You can see that's the driveway right there. Uh, and then I guess, no, that's not right. This one's the next one. Yeah, there we go, that lines up. And if we were to move these off like this, this one would line up over here. Again, not perfectly. And then again, the first one will line up about there. So you have a complete 360 in four different frames. Um, so that's great, you're in street view with an address. Let's go ahead and go back to my GitHub account here and back out. And that was get street by address. Here's get street by uh, GPS. Basically the same exact code, except for instead of grabbing an address, we're just grabbing the latitude and longitude. And we're saying that as the location there. Um, not gonna bother really going over that because everything else is pretty much the same. We're getting the same four views, looping it through, looping through the function, blah, blah, blah. So, again, this is a series. Hopefully you've watched the previous videos in this series. If not, there should be an annotation on the screen, as well as possibly one in the description of the video. Um, if you want to get all the code in this video, go to github.com forward slash metalx1000. Look at my repositories for one called Maps and Locations. This first part is all Basher, the shell scripts. Um, and you can see all the code there. I recommend typing it out yourself, playing around with it, so you learn if you're having issues, then you can download mine, or if you just want to download mine to modify it, or just download it to use it, they're all there, free and open source, my side of the code again. Remember, you're using a service that's online that can be taken away and does have restrictions on the number of requests, and of course the images are copyrighted, so be careful what you use them for. Um, please visit my site, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris K. should be a link to that in the description as well. And please like, subscribe, and share. It helps me out a lot. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. 
So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.